Find enlightenment as you seek moderation as you ascend the 33 steps to the pagoda on the island of Shikoku. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're reviewing the game Shikoku from Grand Gamers Guild. This is from designer Eloy Pujadas and artwork by Amelia Sales. The game is for three to eight players. It takes about 30 minutes to play. Uh, Grand Gamers Guild sent us a copy to check out, so let's take a look at how it's played. To set up the game, place the board in the center and deal three cards to every player. A mantra line is formed by revealing one card per player and placed in ascending order. Turn order is randomly assigned by placing a meeple on each card, and players move their marker meeple up the steps on the board the number of sandals shown on the card, and then you're ready to begin. In turn order from left to right, players will play one card from their hand and move their meeple to it. Cards are once again arranged in ascending order. All meeples except those in the second and second to last, or in a three-player game, the middle, will move up the steps toward the pagoda. The lowest played card and meeple is moved to the end of the mantra line and the new turn order is formed. Players will choose one card from the previous mantra line to add to their hand. The last player will instead draw one from the deck. Play continues until someone has reached the pagoda. Moderation is the key in this game because the players who are in second and second to last will win. Shikoku is one of those great games that has this really low learning curve. You can jump into it immediately, and in all truth, your first couple turns in the game probably don't matter to your overall success in the game, so it's great to be able to pull new players into. The cool thing is that as it ramps up and you get to the end of that game, you've got this really intense struggle for those last couple turns as everybody is nail-biting, trying to figure out, like, which card do I need to hold on to just in case? Which one can I play to slip in? How can I push the other guy over the finish line? And those last couple turns become this really exciting, really heated experience that you try to not be the first guy over the finish line. Yeah, it has a nice um, different feel to it because you're not trying to be the first one to hit the finish line. You're trying to be second or second to last. Um, and sometimes there are multiple winners in the game, which is a little different than a lot of other games. But a lot of times it's more fun, honestly, because yeah. you feel dumb if you're the loser. Yeah. <laughs> but you get a four other, five other winners in the game instead of just one guy that wins. And so while it's not cooperative or collaborative in any way, it does kind of have that everybody won, except for you two guys, uh, experience at the end of each game. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, one that heavier strategy planners um, will do well in because because uh, you can plan all the way through and hold the cards that you want and try and get other players to move when they don't want to. Or it can be something that's a little bit lighter for newer gamers and it's easy to jump in because you're simply just playing a card every turn. And it's fun for them too because they stand a better chance of winning the game being one of the pack that got lucky and being in the middle. Uh, the game is really interesting in the mechanics. It kind of reminded me of like King Domino where you're taking your turn order based on where your meeple was from the last round and being strategic in that is pretty cool too because you can uh, even you may have the lowest card and you don't want to play that because that makes you the last to choose for the next round. So being able to kind of, uh, ooh, second, I don't move. It gives me an opportunity to have some control. Uh, there's some really neat thinky stuff that goes on each round, even though those last ones are the ones that really matter the most. Yeah, the art style is very nice. Um, it's got kind of that cut paper look. I kind of wish they would have actually done cut paper and photographed it instead of just the digital, but the digital is beautiful. Um, it's got very minimal components, so it makes it an easy one to pull out um, at a game night. Yep, set up a tearing down time really great. We played this with a gaming group just at our game night the other night, and it was exciting to watch everybody's light bulb go on about halfway through the game as they realized like, whoa, that number 10 card is super powerful. It's in the middle. It might not move at all. It's only got one same handle on it. I need to hold on to that puppy till the end of the game in case I end up being the first guy. Uh, and it was just a really fun experience as everybody kind of was casually into it and then yeah, ramp up moment hits and everybody's going, oh, I can't believe it. Okay, uh. It's got a great wrap up experience and then the post game analysis, this is one that 
you wouldn't necessarily anticipate that. There's no deception or whatever in the game, but everybody likes to do the thing at the end where they're like, oh man, I was totally gonna play this card if you hadn't played that card and then you move my guy. I enjoy those kind of experiences a lot. If this sounds like something that you are interested in, check out Shikoku from Grand Gamers Guild. And then be sure to check out our other videos and like and comment on all our stuff from Twitch. My brain isn't working this way. I told you that. All right. Two. No, do that. Path of enlightenment are your goals as you try to ascend the 33 steps to the pagoda on the island of Chicago. I forgot about that. The name of the game. Name of the game.